Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the DLF Trade Show on the DLF YouTube channel. Russ Addison, excited to be back to talk about some trade values, to talk about some trades, to talk just to each other. It's always nice seeing Addison's face. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's nice to see your face too, Russ. <laughs> and we we can take a moment to celebrate the jersey hanging behind Addison, that number 12 up there, Godwin having a week of course it came at the cost of my many mike evans shares and i also need to point out it has been a long running joke of this show how ridiculous i am about actually hanging stuff up on my walls and how it takes me forever saturday i finally have some time i hang up this beautifully signed evan engram jersey mm -hmm. and then sunday he pulls his hammy in warm-ups and doesn't play mm -hmm. My bad, everybody. Is that hung up or is that just leaning on the floor? No, no, there's. <laughs> oh, it's hung up. All right. All right. It's up I there. apologize. I needed to, you know, I wanted to leave some space just in case, you know, but there's like a good, there's a chunk of, of ground in between, space in between. But yeah, so I'm going to have to say a big old sorry about that for everyone who was depending on Evan Engram like I was in many leagues. But we're not here to talk about Evan Engram. We're not even here to talk about tight ends. We're not even here to talk about veterans. Oh, we're here to talk about rookie quarterbacks and their prices. We are here to price check rookie quarterbacks as the screen, no, the show sheet says. That's the words. So before we actually get into any of this, are you worried about Caleb Williams? Not currently. I think Caleb himself, like he's he pulls off some pretty crazy stuff, yes, because uh, he has to because that offensive line is terrible. So like every, I, I feel like I say it a few times a game over the past couple of weeks uh, that I've watched the Chicago game where I'm just like, how did Caleb do that? You know, so yeah. the fact that I'm still saying that I think is is a good thing. And if they could just beef up that offensive line, like he'll be fine. I think throughout his career, 2024 might be worse than what we thought, which I think was, you know, we just have to remember that this kid is still a rookie in the NFL, no matter how good he was of a prospect coming in, no matter how good the situation was around him. Like he himself is still a rookie and he has to catch up on everything, you know? So maybe that is just a reminder for us in the future that when we get Caleb Williams level prospects, you know, over the next handful of years or so um, that we just have to remember that these guys are still rookies and we should, um, you know, have rookie expectations. <laughs> Pump th this is pumping brakes, even though it should just be with my foot and one of them. But this is this is the hand version of pumping brakes. Just calm down a little bit. Um, I'm with you. I, I'm. It, it's always great if a rookie comes out and just does it right, like yeah. CJ Stroud style, uh, Malik Neighbor style, Puka style, Laporta style, which is a conversation for Justin day Herbert. Yep. yep. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm still, I, I'm good on Caleb. I'm not really worried about it. He's good. There's a lot of weapons around him. I think it just needs that real game time to catch up. Mm -hmm. And sturdier offensive line play would always be nice. Yes. I don't know if you can count on that, especially for this year, though. Yes. So let's get to the trade. 12-team super flex. This one straight up, Caleb Williams at 716.5 for Jordan Love at 637.4. I'm curious if you remember if this was done like pre or post Love injury. I can look it up. Because honestly, I got, I'm not even sure how that really affects anything. I'm just going to say it right now. I agree with the analyzer that I do think Caleb Williams is worth more. But what's the advantage of if this is post injury sending Caleb for Jordan love right now, I don't I think there's a dip in love's value because of the injury. It's a couple of games in a 25 year old starting quarterback who just got paid like, like, mm -hmm. or extended, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I don't necessarily think I understand this because even if I'm competing, I don't think I'm moving off of Caleb that easily for someone of love's level. So this was done post love injury. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, there was another trade in here too, which was done the day before this specific trade. That was Caleb Williams and Jalen Polk for Jordan Love and Tyler Johnson. So 
more or less the same thing. It feels like the Caleb side got a little bit. There's a little bit more on the Caleb side on that one because of Polk versus Tyler Johnson. Uh, but more or less, it was Caleb versus Love. Yeah. So twice since the Caleb in, or since the Love injury um, that this has happened, at least in the leagues that we're pulling from. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, I feel like the Jordan Love injury, um, if you were that hard of a contender, I feel like a couple weeks of Jordan Love would not make you shift over to Caleb Williams. And if you were still rebuilding you wouldn't give up on caleb that easily for jordan love uh, it is it is definitely a weird trade <laughs> for sure yeah i don't get it all right so i'm gonna we're going off script for a second even though there's no script we're going off show sheet for a second because mm -hmm. i sent an offer in one of my leagues someone put kyler murray on their trade block and i sent an offer of trevor lawrence and a 26 first for kyler murray this team is rebuilding so i'm like Let's see what I can get away with. That's a little, that's light. I get it. But, you know, see what I could do. He counters back with Kyler Murray for Caleb Williams in a 26 first. I'd Is, do it. I'm stuck. I can't do it. Um, I'm not sure, even with what we've seen so far, that Caleb isn't still worth more in the general world than Kyler Murray is. No, I, th I think... I think Kyler's elevated himself. I think now that we've seen Kyler perform well for two weeks in a row, and now that we've seen Marvin Harrison perform well, then I think that there is going to be more confidence instilled. And uh, the the Kyler had one, he had one throw where he kind of pulled a Caleb Williams thing where like he was running around behind the line of scrimmage, dodging and evading defenders a couple of times. I saw that and I was like, yep, I'm like, I was already fully bought in like 110%, but that kicked me up to 115. I was like, the knee right. is totally fine. Everything's great. I would I would send Caleb and a first for Kyler. And I don't know if that is indicative still of my love for Kyler or if that is a little bit of maybe I have dropped Caleb a little bit in my rankings. I'm not sure. I sort of just walked away. You know, that's a lie. I countered with uh, Caleb for Kyler in a second just to prove a point. Um that's going to get rejected. I was just being a jerk about it. Um, I don't know, but I just, I wanted to talk about that out loud just for my own personal satisfaction, but let's move on to the next trade on the sheets where it is Caleb Williams and James Connor for Devon H hand and DJ Moore. That's an interesting trade. Caleb Williams, seven sixteen point five. James Connor, 70 for a total of seven eighty seven. Round to go. Devon Achan, 462. DJ Moore, 371 for a total of 833. Devon Achan handled a lot of touches this past week at a game where, honestly, I sat him in one of my – I sat him because right. I knew I wasn't going to be able to pay enough attention before the game started to know if he was playing or not. Mm -hmm. So I unfortunately sat him just because I was busy, and he put up 30 fantasy points. Uh, he was pretty limitless for a guy who said it was going to be pretty limited before <laughs> with, a, with a almost high ankle sprain. They were talking about it first and he like no one else Didn't did matter. all that much. Like this is it. This is of course, this is one game and who knows if they're even going to try and give him the ball that much again. But like, this is what we wanted. This is what we hoped for. This is again, so confusing. I don't understand why you do this. Caleb must be your QB three and you want to mm -hmm. score points but you're giving up James Conner, who's doing really well. And DJ Moore, who's not doing, he's not doing bad. He's getting a lot of targets. It's just not turning into too much. Yep. Like, I don't understand this trade at all, which makes me just say, give me the most valuable and the best asset, which is Caleb. I'm just going to keep Caleb here. That That's essentially the gymnastics that I had to do in my head. Because I was like, ooh. Because I, I really, really like Devon Achan. I think that his value is well over 500 by now. And it, it should be in this analyzer. Like, I think he's a solidified top five dynasty running back. I have him RB3 right now. Ooh. Out of Gibbs. Ooh. Uh, now, they're in, the same, they're in the same tier. The big three has become the big four. So, I will, I will say that. But he has solidified himself ahead of... JT and ETN, like you were saying, ahead of Kyron and Saquon, and he's above Christian McCaffrey because age and also a chance playing currently. <laughs> so there is that. Um, but still, yes, I agree with you that this is a weird trade. Caleb Williams is still worth more than Devon Achan, even with Achan's value bump. Um, yeah, it, it is. 
It is certainly weird. I will say I made this a super flex trade. This was done in one quarterback, which makes absolutely zero sense to me why oh. this was done in a one quarterback league. I made this a super flex trade for the fa- sake of the value, just so we could talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that, in one quarterback, makes, this makes no sense. No sense. Give me a yeah. channel. Day. Caleb is like, Caleb might be the, the worst asset in this deal in a one quarterback league. He's yeah, because James Conner scoring points, but still, there's longevity there where there is no yes. longevity to James Conner. Yeah. Uh, real quick, and I know this is a trade show and everything, but I'm pulling up September ADP, and it's it's the quarterback ranking, so it doesn't matter that it's one QB. Caleb is in a QB ten, and just to put it out there for the past trade we just talked about, Jordan Love QB twelve, above oh Kyler Murray QB eight by the way, uh, Caleb Williams or Dak Prescott. I'll take Dak. Okay. I was on Dak before the season, and then I'm now with at least production. I'll have to, I take Dak. Okay. And that's really, like, there's, not, like, above him is Kyler, Joe Burrow, and Anthony Richardson will forever just be too high for me. Yep. So, yeah, Caleb Williams really does belong around that QB10 area. Actually, and then let's use this to transition into our next player. Who do you have higher, Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels? I have Jaden Daniels higher. But, again, I same tier. Daniels higher. But I would take Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. If I was offered that one for one, I would take the Jaden Daniels side. Um, but I think that's more just due to, and I feel like this was very predictable going into the year, is that the Russian quarterback is going to score more for fantasy and is going to have an easier transition for fantasy football as a rookie when you have the mobility to, to back it up, you know, and hopefully Daniels figures out what he can do with the passing game. Cause it seems very clear that he wants to run and he just wants to hand it off to Brian Robinson. But from a fantasy perspective, I would take Dan Daniels over Caleb Williams. Yeah. I, I look forward to Washington spending their draft pick on a very good wide receiver this coming year. Oh, like get me some tech tech in there. <sighs> yep. I, I've, I've become a very big Jaden Daniels fan. Uh, I was a fan of him coming into the start of this point scoring season. And then every game that I've watched, I like him more and more. And, and I don't just mean as a fantasy asset. I mean, as like a quarterback and as like a player, it, I liked watching him and I get that this giants game was kind of gross. Uh, thankfully I was not stuck watching it. I don't remember. I, I can, I'm sure I complained about it last week. How my NFL plus wasn't working. So I was stuck watching the giants game for a quarter and a half. until I just turned it off. I, I logged into NFL plus 45 minutes early just to make sure it would load. So there wasn't like too many people trying to log in at once. So thankfully I did. I was not stuck watching that kick field goal fest. Well, I mean, had you watched the Giants game, you would have seen no less than 90 percent Malik neighbors. <laughs> yes, that, I, <laughs> which could have been at least helped me out with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much Malik neighbors. But again, talk about that soon. But oh, and even this first trade has them both anyway. 12 team super flex. And then there's, oh man, so much to talk about in this trade. Jaden Daniels and Brian Robinson. Caution, Team B is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal for Caleb Williams, Bryce Young, and Derrick Henry. All right, let's talk about Bryce Young for a second. He just got benched for Andy Dalton. Do you think this is like a Tua and Ryan Fitzpatrick benching, or is he done in Carolina? I think... For his career, I think it's to uh, being benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick, but I think Bryce Young is done in general. Like I don't, I don't think Bryce Young recovers from this. Oh, because like Tua got benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick, but they went back to Tua. Like it, it was yeah. his job. They just like they realized that the team around him wasn't enough to keep a rookie or young quarterback going. So they just like let's throw the ninety-year-old who can take a hit out there. Yeah, and I was kind of thinking that maybe that this is what that's what this is. But in my head, I'm like, just trade Bryce, let him go somewhere else because he can't be this bad. He looks bad, dude. And I don't know if that is just circumstantial based on his O lines not doing anything, any favors for him. Um, The receiver room is like okay. Deontay at least can separate, but nobody else can really separate. I just. I think Bryce Young is, I think he's done. I think this is like a Josh Rosen situation. Maybe it's a Sam Darnold situation where he just kind of needs to go elsewhere and then he yeah. finds his footing somewhere. Or, May, or Baker Mayfield, something like that. But like, I, 
Well, at least I, Baker didn't get benched. Like that's the one. Like yeah. I remember the first. I, that was one of my first ideas. Like Baker will go. Baker went somewhere else. But like, well, it's a little different. He at least played through all of the garbage that was in front of him. Okay, but let's get back to this trade. All right, because we don't have an answer anyway. So this trade to me feels like Jaden Daniels is actually being valued as the higher asset. Yes. Yeah, because they're adding. Bryce Young and Derrick Henry. They're adding the other two assets to Caleb. And maybe it's a little bit of like Bryce brings it down. So you have to make it, you have to make that value back up with Derrick Henry. But it does, yeah, it does feel like Jaden Daniels is the higher value player in this, which I do agree with. Yeah. And Brian Robinson is scoring points. Like you said, he just likes handing the ball off to Brian Robinson and he's doing pretty well with it. He, he did pretty well last year, also, just to put it out there. <sighs> The people aren't ready for my B Rob over Derrick Henry take in Dynasty, but I mean in Dynasty, yeah, Derrick Henry's gonna be and redraft, but that's that's spicy. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> but like, if they if, if someone were to swap them in a trade, just one for one, I wouldn't be like, oh man, this one person did so much better than the other. It's like, I guess whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I would take B Rob over Derrick Henry, and I would take I don't really want Bryce Young, and I would take Daniels over Caleb. So there it is. Give me the commanders. Yeah, exactly. So like Derrick Henry has a hundred points on Brian Robinson in the analyzer, but a lot of it I think is name recognition at this point. There's five years age difference between the two of them. Maybe if the Ravens offense clicks a little bit, like they just look not together. Mark Andrews needs to get his legs under him and that offense needs to find a rhythm. And once that does, I think Derrick Henry to the moon, but that's assuming that does even happen. But I'm with you. I think like Bryce Young does bring value to this. I don't think he's worth nothing, but give me Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. Give me Brian Robinson. And I don't really guess I don't care enough about the rest for it to really make me not get the quarterback. I like more. That's a, I think that's a good way to word it. Boom. Yep. I like it. Next trade. Oh, did you look when you were putting this together? No, I didn't actually. But then after you said it, I kind I I was I when I was scrolling back to the Caleb Williams stuff, I saw this pop up. Jaden Daniels and Kyle Pitts for Trevor Lawrence at a 25 and 26 first. Why don't you tell me what you think about this trade? Oh, for the people, I won't tell which side, but Russ was involved in, in this trade. So this yes, is, this is one of Russ's trade. trades from TA5. Um, I'm not going to say which side he was. Um, but I I I was I was very intrigued by this overall when I saw this in the trade finder. Um, I I would take Kyle Pitts over a 26 first, and I don't know, I don't know where I stand on Lawrence and a first for Jaden Daniels. Overall, I feel like this is a very, very fair trade. If you're looking for kind of production and it's also nice that ta5 has the 1.75 tight end premium so there is yep. that too if you're looking for the production from a quarterback right now i like moving from lawrence to daniels and grabbing kyle pitts but i think i like it on the other side too where if you're kind of rebuilding kyle pitts yeah is like a it's like a nice tight end hopefully he continues to kind of break out this year. He hasn't looked all that great over the first two weeks, but that, I think that's more of a product of Kirk Cousins not really looking all that great. He is looking so, better every every yes. drive to me. He like throughout the game on Monday, he started to look better as the game went on. So Until I'm the final drive. Yeah. Sh incredible. <laughs> heavy crossing my fingers that Kirk Cousins keeps getting better and then that does more for London and Pitts, but sorry. Agreed. Agreed. I but I think as a rebuilder like moving Pitts for a first makes total sense to me. And then moving Daniels to Lawrence in a first, I don't think that that is the value difference between the two. I don't think it's a first round pick difference between them. So as a rebuilder, being able to split up Daniels to Lawrence in a first, I think makes a ton of sense. Cause then you are betting on at least hopefully greener pastures ahead for Trevor Lawrence. Uh, and then you could sell him for more than what you paid to get him here. I understand both sides of this, so I feel like that's a cop out answer. I will take the Daniels and the Kyle Pitts side at the end of the day in a vacuum, though. All right. Well, you made the right choice, at least. <laughs> uh, I will say, for the smallest bit of context, this took place before this weekend. This trade was done on Saturday, so it was done before the games. Just in case you were trying to, anyone was trying to, well, Kyle Pitts, two games. Well, it was only one at the time. 
uh, we've talked about Kyle Pitts enough. We're both very big Kyle Pitts fans. And I, I was just saying how much of a Jaden Daniels fan I was becoming. And what makes this a little bit more interesting and leans a little bit more towards the other team, my team's not great. Ah, is that your first and second? Or is that your two first? I mean, 25 yeah. and 26 firsts? Yes. Ah. But I'm also gaining Kyle Pitts without giving up a player, you know, so my team is going to be better for having done this trade, or I should say, I'm going to score more points for having done this trade. Uh, but also, they're both 23 years old, and I feel like I'm not good at, I almost said not good enough to get the 101, but like, I'm not bad enough, I guess I should say, to get the 101. So like, if I'm at the 104 this year, am I going to get someone better than Jaden Daniels? Probably not. Am I going to get someone, you know, first of all, time matters. So in the 2026 draft, if I'm at the 104 or maybe my team got a little better, the 105, 106, am I going to get someone better than Kyle Pitts? Hopefully not, you know, like, cause still got to cross our fingers a little bit that Kyle Pitts turns into what we want him to in this offense. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, this was a good trade. I can't remember what the original offer was. It was, a little different um but he came back asking for the two first and i was just like this is this is stupid of me procedurally to have a not great team and trade away both of my firsts that is not good process but i really like Jaden daniels and i really like kyle pitts so i'm gonna do it anyway I, I pulled up your roster and I, I would take the German Lawrence and the two first side after looking at your roster. I just, this is, this is the move that I would love to do. And I've talked about this multiple times on the channel of trying to identify these teams that I feel like are slightly overconfident in their abilities and try to get their first round pick. And oh, no, on. no, I am not winning. Like, no, I just, well, I, wanna, if yeah. I can get, if I can make the playoffs, that's amazing. Just make it the 105 or 106, and I'm happy. Like yeah. that that's really what this is. If I find out I miss out on McMillan because of this, I will be sad. That's probably it. At least as Fair. of right now, because he's the only player I really am enamored with at the moment. Fair. Maybe. The, the, I, I, could, I think if you're at the 105, 106, you just missed the playoffs, which I think this team is a just missed the playoff kind of team. You it might. There is a probably isn't there. Yeah. So my, the reason I really ended up doing this. And again, there's so many things you need to think about when trying to decide not even specifically this trade. It's just like what direction you're taking your team in. There's a lot of rebuilding teams. There's a lot of teams that are not competing in this league. So I might be able to sneak into that six seed or technically five seed because six seed is the most points scored, which I'm probably not going to get. Uh, like I might be able to sneak into that last playoff spot just out of wins and losses because of the amount of teams that won't be able to field full lineups because they're rebuilding a little bit. And, and that's part of it that went into what went into my decision also. But really came down to, I like these two players and I, I think they have a higher upside that Daniels has that much of a higher upside than Trevor Lawrence is showing right now. Yeah, that's fair. I think if, if you were a, like a legit contender and you're like, man, Trevor Lawrence is just really dragging me down right now as my QB two, I'd probably do that and assume that those are late firsts. But yeah, I think if of you, course, if you ship them more towards way. mid to early, then I think that pulls me back over to the Lawrence side. Yeah. But no, again, I, I will never claim to always do the smart thing. But <laughs> I had a lot Russ of fun. Says not as he does. I had a lot of fun. That's what matters. Next, we move down to a combo. We have both Bo Nix and JJ McCarthy. First, let's do Bo Nix. 12-team super flex. Bo Nix and Xavier Leggett for Alvin Kamara. Ooh. Okay, Bo Nix in at 223. Leggett at 58 for a total of 281. Kamara by himself, 164.5. Caution, Team A is giving up the highest value asset and the most pieces in the deal. If Bo Nix is my QB3 and I'm a competing team, yeah i understand why you would go for kamara in that instance for yeah. sure yeah if, you're, if you were just at like the 112 and you're like ah dang it like i wanted btj or brooks or worthy to fall none of them did i guess i'll take bo nicks here yeah. you know like if you were that team and he's your qb3 or maybe your qb4 uh but you are competing especially because if you had the 112 last year like you won the league 
had yeah. the 112, drafted Bo Nix out of let's just see what happens. Best play, yeah, best available, yeah. And then now you're a contender now, and you have that ability to flip him and Leggett for Kamara. Yeah, I guess I do that. Yeah, I feel like that, yeah. Because Kamara looks fantastic. This like he this new night or new uh Saints team is Kubiak's from the Niners system. So I've Whoa. seen a lot of people saying that Kamara is the is the Saints Christian McCaffrey, which you know look, the man's last name is Kubiak. He's not from a Niner system, he's from his dad's system. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, that's true. But it wasn't he he was on the Niners. Yes, yes, yes. I was like just with with the Shanahan. Be, being a little playful. Uh, real quick, again, just to be a little self-serving, Bo Nix or Jameson Williams? I think I take Jamo there. After week one, I couldn't do it. But I'm thinking I might now. He had nine targets on week two. That's what I, I was. I was. I would say the same thing that I was like, I didn't see. I saw enough for J mode that I would start considering it, but I want to see it again. And I, I say at one week with Bo Nix was not enough for me to turn away from him just yet. But after two weeks, Bo Nix did the same thing. Jameson Williams did the same thing. Like usage wise, he didn't have the big touchdown, but he had nine targets again in week two uh, with Amon Ra taking like 18 targets or whatever. So J is still very much involved. I think I would take Jameson Williams now over Bo Nix. That's uh Bo Nix is scary, I think, now. Like, he hasn't, I haven't even seen redeeming qualities over the past two weeks to make me be like, oh, there's still something yeah. worth it here. Yeah, but, but that he, offense is still so bad. And so bad. Like, I'm not judging Joe, I'm not judging Nix much on this. Like, it's this is going to come down to more of the houses resolve <laughs> at the end of the season. <laughs> Like, you know, is he a defeated shell of a human being or is he still pumped up? Is he still like, because that's really all you could do right now. Because that team is just. It's so bad. You want to, I saw a PFF um, mock draft. And they had Ted McMillan going fifth overall to the Broncos. I'd rather him go somewhere else. The pick right after that was the commander's. No, they, they drafted Travis Hunter, which that would be really interesting. But <laughs> yeah, the pick right after that was the was come on, the Commanders, trade up one spot to go get Matet. Do it, do it, do it, do it. We're, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Yep. <sighs> okay, so next trade and our last trade is JJ McCarthy for a 25 second and Jordan Mason. Well, Jordan Mason's value is not going to be caught up in the analyzers, what it should be right now, but still, JJ McCarthy 274.9, the 24 second one. 25 second 111 and Jordan Mason 50 for a total of 160. I mean, Jordan Mason, I've seen numerous Jordan Masons for a second. Yeah. So, I mean, let's just pretend he's worth a 25 second. So this really should be 220. So it's 275 to 220. Yep. Still a little low. McCarthy still missing a season. I don't care. Still worth a first. I get wanting Jordan Mason's points right now, but I still think, like, if I'm a rebuilding team, I love doing this to go get JJ McCarthy. Absolutely. If I'm a competing team, I think I want, I want, I think the value is play fine. the entire season. Yeah. I think the value is fine. The idea is fine. This is like, a, a, like, if you're a competing team and you, are still very much competing without JJ McCarthy. And you think you're just like, Oh, I just have this like extra. Guy. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Like an extra pick. It's essentially what McCarthy is right now. Yeah. It's just an extra pick. Um, how can I use him to help my chances of winning this year? Oh, I should go probably try and see if I can get a running back or maybe I get a running back in a second. I don't Jordan Mason would not mean my target. I would want somebody with more longevity. Not, not only just like past week, 10 but like yeah. into 2025 you know yeah like make McCarthy that brian robinson him. you know make that david yes. montgomery or Najee harris or somebody i think that could maybe produce semi-equally to jordan mason this year but then still have a role in 2025 yeah 
yeah, this is this is pretty easily McCarthy to me. Like I love the idea of like I have one or two teams where I didn't even realize I had Jordan Mason on them. <laughs> yeah, I have a I had a couple of dynasty teams like that too. It was like, oh, yeah. free pick. Yeah. And to be able to get McCarthy out of that, who look, I'm not the biggest McCarthy fan, but he looked he made a couple of really nice plays in the preseason and he's still in a very good season, a situation that's making Sam Darnold look like an MVP. That, so, I mean, that's it right there with the fact that Sam Darnold looks good and we're hopefully projecting that McCarthy is better than Sam Darnold. And I mean, Hawkinson's not even playing yet. And or and Addison is hurt. Addison like, barely played. And like, so <laughs> yeah, I love doing this for JJ McCarthy the other way. Like everything Addison said, it's a little, it's off. It's not quite right. Yep. Yeah, I still stand by if you're a contender and you have an extra first round pick for 2025 that is late or you have you have an extra first round pick and then you use your late first round pick. Yes. Going to buy J.J. McCarthy, I think, is a quality investment right now. I think if you're a contender and you only had your first round pick, I probably wouldn't use it to go buy McCarthy. Save it for Uh, something you'll need later on. Exactly. Yeah. Or just, you know, if you end up not needing to use it at all and you still win anyway. Maybe you trade for McCarthy in the offseason, or maybe you just see what that pick turns into in April and May, you know? So yeah. it's it's still a quality pick, but I so but I wouldn't do that if you're a contender and you only had your first. Yes. Um, but if you had an extra first somehow, I think buying McCarthy as a contender is a pretty good way to extend your competing window by buying low on yeah. somebody like him. Yeah, exactly. All right. And that's, that's the end. I loved how much me talk there was on this show. I got to ask a bunch of questions. We talked about one of my trades. I love it. Well, that is it. This has been the DLF trade show on the DLF YouTube channel. Russ Fisher, Dynasty Outhouse, Addison Hayes, Adam Hayes, Hayes underscore. We'll catch you next time.